Cairo, Seattle. This is COVID-19 Seattle. I'm Dave Ross. And I'm Aaron Granillo. Governor Jay Inslee will announce today he is extending his stay home, stay healthy order. What we don't know yet is for how long. A few CEOs around the state, though, they have an idea of what the new normal should look like when businesses reopen. They're part of the group Challenge Seattle. Former Governor Christine Gregoire is CEO. How do we make sure that we're paying attention to sanitization? Yes, it's surfaces and so on, but it's things like doorknobs or pushing the button in an elevator. Do you require masks? Should everybody have their temperature being taken? Gregoire says those sometimes clunky virtual meetings will also likely have to continue. Dave, you've been working remotely for more than a month now. What would make you feel comfortable coming back to the office and joining us here? Well, knowing that the uh, services were cleaned, uh, you've got Purell everywhere. Last day I was there anyway, you had Purell everywhere, so I feel good about that. I now know that uh, both Chris and Colleen, who I work with in the same studio, have tested negative for everything. Mm -hmm. So that's probably pretty safe. I uh, myself wear my mask when I go out in public, and most people around me seem to be wearing them as well. So I um, I guess I feel pretty good about it, but that's because of of our office. It's not a it's not a particularly crowded office. I think I think the question is, when would you feel comfortable going back, for example, into a a restaurant setting or even a movie theater? Right. Right. Yeah. Or on an airplane, for example. We just heard uh, yesterday, Alaska Airlines, Seattle-based Alaska, is now going to require all passengers who hop on planes to wear masks during the flights. Now, we've been talking this week about getting people to feel safe flying again. Uh, that's certainly one way to do it. And full disclosure, Dave, I actually have a, I have a flight to the Midwest early August on Alaska Airlines. Uh, I'm not particularly excited about wearing a mask the whole time. I have glasses and they fog up when I wear a mask and I, so I can't read a book. I can't watch things on, on the, on my iPad, for instance, right. but I'm actually I'm going to go. I think. I mean, if I see other people around me wearing masks, that's a that's a sense of security for me. I feel good about hopping on a plane if I see the the flight attendants and all the passengers and the pilots. I would suspect as well, all wearing masks. Right. Well, I'm pretty sure too that they're going to pay particular attention to the air filtration system, which has always been there on airplanes. They bring in fresh outside air, and uh, and they filter it. I imagine that that will be even more intense. Although I I can't confirm that. But again, they. It's in their interest to to build confidence in that way. They're going to keep the middle seats open, from what I understand. Mm-hmm. Um, I flew back early in the epidemic in the middle of March, flew to West Virginia mm-hmm. and back. The flights were fairly empty. I obviously didn't catch anything uh, from that flight. So, And since now they're being especially careful about wiping down the plane between uh, between flights, I think you'd probably be okay. The, the the thing that you're worried about is being in a uh, a large group of people you don't know, mm-hmm. whether it's in a grocery store or out in a park somewhere where nobody's wearing a mask. And then there's probably a pretty decent risk that you would be uh, exposed. But um, I, I feel that if... If everybody gets into the habit of wearing the mask, and remember you're protecting other people, which means you're re- relying on other people to protect you. So it's got to be it's got to be something accepted by everybody. Uh, in that environment, I think I feel pretty good. There are many companies now that are being allowed to reopen. Of course, you know Alaska now a- adding this safety measure. You have Boeing, for instance, which is now being trusted to operate with strict safety measures, including having their employees wear masks. So shouldn't small businesses now, by this point, be allowed to do the same? I mean, that's their big frustration here, after all. They feel like they're being treated unequally. They feel like the government has too much control over their livelihoods. Uh, Isn't there an argument to be had now that if if big companies like this can operate safely, at least in, in their minds, let us open it up. And if the public feels safe going out, let that be the case. Well, I think you have to, because otherwise a lot of these businesses are going to vanish, and you have to decide what's an acceptable cost here. Um, I remember suggesting early on in this that the the sign in the windows say, no mask, no service. Mm-hmm. I would like to see a little bit more testing, I think, about how effective the homemade cloth masks are at containing normal talking. I'm sure they can contain a sneeze pretty well, right? 
But now that we hear that normal talking can actually be a mode of transmission, it would be nice if there was some kind of testing that reassured you that if you were in a store, I don't know, three to six feet away from somebody who's talking at you, does the virus get out under those circumstances? It would seem to me that for places like restaurants, where it's going to be almost impossible to stay six feet away from people and for the for the business to be viable, you'd probably want to take a temperature check at the door. Uh, I mean, I guess it feels kind of awkward and like an invasion of privacy, but it takes, what, a split second? That's something that the maitre d' could do when you're when you're there asking for your table. Shouldn't take any more time. It's going to be awkward if somebody says, uh, I'm sorry, you have a fever, go away. <laughs> Especially if that person arrives without a mask and then uh, has a fever. But um, that's the kind of compromise I think you're going to have to make. Dave, I heard your commentary this morning about contact tracing because... As we know, as you test more and more people, those who are positive are going to have to give names of people who they came into contact with. Here is what Dr. Keith Jerome from the University of Washington Virology Lab told you. There is going to be some peer pressure to say, well, if, if you do test positive, even if you haven't had symptoms, uh, wouldn't you mind um, working with with the authorities or an app or whatever to figure out where you've been and who else might get that infection. Because remember, they may not be as lucky uh, as you are and you have no symptoms. They may end up in the hospital, right? And the sooner that we can get those people the care they need, the better. And as you said, Dave, it sounds like this would be your patriotic duty to give names of contacts, but that also puts you in a a pretty awkward position, right? Right. As I said this morning, I, I feel doubly committed to not contracting the virus myself for fear of testing positive and then having to give to somebody the names of all the people I encountered that day, especially if it was names of friends who would know that I had been over and would say, oh, Dave gave my name to somebody. So I think in this kind of an environment, I would be doubly certain to wear a mask wherever I went so that uh, nobody could say, Hey, you gave me the virus. Not that they blame me for it, but I would feel guilty for having done it, right? Plus, you can see the real-world consequences of that if somebody, God forbid, has to end up going to the hospital because um, you expose them. Now, the app is something a little bit different. As I understand it, of course, the key to the app is everybody's got to want to download it Mm -hmm. uh, for it to work effectively. So the app would simply map your location moment to moment. It can also sense if you're in some kind of a crowd. It keeps track of that anonymously. So everybody is assigned essentially a number. Once somebody in that group ends up testing positive and then enters that diagnosis into the app, bingo, the alert goes out to anybody who was near you, and you wouldn't necessarily know who it was. Although, as I say, depending on how good you are remembering where you were at a certain time and who wasn't wearing a mask at that time, you might be able to to divine who it was that uh, infected you with possible social consequences to friendships, depending on how they, they feel about that. Uh, I've downloaded one of these apps, and, and there, there are several apps, right? So some of them track your location all the time. Uh, some of them just ask how you're feeling at a particular moment and where you are when you feel that way. And the idea is if enough people use that, you can you can get the early detection of where outbreaks are taking place and take some sort of action. That, too, is anonymous. I, I guess this is a question for people listening. Number one, do you trust these apps to actually be anonymous, or do you have a sneaking suspicion that somebody is actually tracking you and that at some future date you could be held liable for uh, infecting someone? Maybe what would make people feel better about that is if there was some kind of action in Congress, some sort of law that says, no, you cannot be held liable if uh, you are identified as uh, infecting someone by using one of these apps. The app that you downloaded, would that notify you if you did come into contact with somebody and, and they also opted into yeah. that program? Yeah, it's a, it's a, yeah, it's mutual. I mean, you upload your information and into the app, and it alerts, it alerts others, and it alerts you if somebody else was in, who was infected is uh, in contact with you. So, yeah, it sends out... It was um, the one I the one I downloaded was originated in, in Israel, I believe. They've been using it for uh, using it for a while, but as I understand it, I mean it's voluntary, and only a, a relatively small percentage of the, of the population is using it. And 
to be effective, I would think that a majority uh, would have to use it. Yeah. And plus, we may, you know, depending on what they do in the future about um, replacing the gas tax, right, with a uh, a mileage tax, we may end up having to give up that information at some point anyway. So I suppose we might as well get used to it. Here in our state, too, I know you mentioned the, the app uh, that was developed in Israel, but Microsoft is, is working with the University of Washington right now to develop one of these contact tracing apps. Uh, and, you know, the company and, and the university claim that the this data will be deleted uh, once this whole pandemic comes to an end. So I guess that's one way to at least try to strike that balance between public health and and personal privacy. But at the end of the day, it also comes down to whether the public trusts that and, you know, isn't super uh, concerned that maybe hackers will somehow get a hold of this data as well. Yeah. Well, hackers have our data anyway, right? Yeah, fair point. I mean, if we weren't paying so much attention to this coronavirus, you'd probably have uh, a hack attack every week. So I have to assume that if somebody really, really, really wants to hack you, they will. And and also, I'll say this. This is just my opinion. But if we do get another mega outbreak of some kind, the location data is there, Aaron. The, the, the If you have a cell phone, you carry it in your pocket, uh, it is kept confidential, but the data is there. So if there's a national emergency declared, uh, they could tell the cell phone companies, we want real-time tracking. We want it now. We want you to tell us when you see any group larger than 50 and uh, start giving it to us in real time. And that data would be there. The only way to get past that would be to, I believe you'd actually have to take the battery out of your phone mm. to shut it off. Because uh, as we know from things like Amber Alerts, even if your phone is off, it will alert you. So uh, it, it depends on, on how far this goes. One more motivation to wear your mask everywhere so the damn thing doesn't spread. And we don't have to talk about these crazy national security scenarios. We will be back tomorrow and every day after with a 10-minute rundown of the daily local news. You can subscribe to this podcast. You can also find our news coverage on MyNorthwest.com or listen live at 97.3 FM.